SV Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of women's college soccer. We are coming to you live from Avaya Stadium in San Jose, California. This is the 2019 NCAA Women's College Cup, our second semifinal of the evening, featuring the top two teams from the Pac-12. The number one overall seed, Stanford Cardinal, and the second seeded UCLA Bruins. These two teams fighting for that spot in the national championship game on Sunday and a chance to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels who are back in the final game after a 2-1 win over another Pac-12 team, the Washington State Cougars. Hi everybody, I'm Jen Hildreth alongside former Stanford Cardinal U.S. National Team Captain Julie Foudy. What a matchup this is between two teams who know each other very well and who also have just a slew of elite players, not only at the collegiate level, but ones you may see soon wearing international jerseys. And that's what's so fun about this game. You want a cheat sheet of the future of women's soccer? Here you have it. Canadian players, uh, Australians, and of course, a, a you know it's chock full, both teams of U.S. youth national team players who have a real chance to make it on the full U.S. women's national team. Well, let's give you a couple of those stars to the watch. Starting for for UCLA, this attack has grown more potent as the season has gone on, in part to the growth of freshman Mia Fischel, whose 14 goals lead the team. She has five in the NCAA tournament. Add to that, all-time assist leader Ashley Sanchez. And when you talk to any teammate about Mia Fischel, what they talk about is how she has become a beast, as they quote, this year and her growth during the season. They said she had confidence coming in, but what she's shown is so impressive. And that 14 goals leads all freshmen in the NCAAs. And then Sanchez, who also we've seen on youth national teams, but really coming into form in this season, 14 assists to lead the team. And as you pointed out, Jen, the career assist leader. Now, how about this one? I mean, this is a bona fide superstar for Stanford, Katarina Macario, 32 goals leading the country this season. Oh, how about, let's add in 23 assists. That's also number one in That's the NCAA. Bad. And she has a dozen game winners. I mean, this is a once in a generation type player. She's the reigning Herman Trophy winner and the favorite to win it again. And she shattered every record at Stanford, pretty much. She leads all offensive categories and she does it on set pieces. She does it from the middle. She's playing in that number 10 as an attacking midfielder. Think about that, 32 goals as an attacking midfielder. And up front, her partner in crime, Madison Haley. Those two have combined for 31 goals this year, and they have been so good together. Haley, a danger in that number nine, playing the center forward spot for Stanford. The twin strikers, they like to call themselves up top. Stanford was a one nothing winner over UCLA in the regular season. This time they meet with a spot in the championship on the line. Tonight we have a rematch of the 2017 Women's College Cup Championship game from Orlando between UCLA and Stanford. The Cardinal would take the lead in the 15th minute. Kira Caruso off the assist from Katarina Macario. And then 11 minutes later, Stanford striking again. They let it, but that would not hold up for long. UCLA did tie it. Stanford came back to win it. What a matchup that was between these two. 3-2 the final. Jay Boissier, the game winner in the 67th minute to give Stanford their second national championship. So there's a little taste of what we could see tonight with these two teams. Stanford, the number one overall seed. UCLA, number two. Those two finishing 1-2 in the Pac-12 conference. What an elite conference that was this season. And here is the lineup for Amanda Cromwell's UCLA Bruins. Switch to that 3-5-2 system and pay particular attention. Jesse Fleming, she'll run the show from midfield there. Canadian international, two World Cups under her belt, one Olympics, a bronze medalist. And she was part and knows very well of that 2017 loss in the final to Stanford. And they have talked about it a lot. They have sat on that one for a while. Seven starters on the field for UCLA who started in that championship game two years ago. Amanda Cromwell started off her career with the Bruins with the national 
national championship in 2013. They got back there, as we just showed you, in 2017, and they have had quite enough of almost. <laughs> they told us yesterday we're finished with almost. <laughs> Stanford and Paul Ratcliffe, what a dominant season this team has had, and here is how they will line up tonight. We talked about Macario and Haley leading the offensive side. Defensively, check out number two, Naomi Germa, Defender of the Year for Pac-12, just named first team All-American, and she's being brought into the December camp with the full U.S. women's national team as well. And this is another one, as we've talked about, of those stars to look towards the future one of four players for Paul Ratcliffe who were called in to that December identification camp by new U.S. national team head coach Vlatko Andonofsky, who is here, by the way, taking in this matchup. And why not? Yeah, we got to see him in between games. He popped into our booth. We were like, wait, hello. <laughs> what are you doing here? Of course you're here. 31st meeting between these two Pac-12 rivals. Stanford leading it overall. They've won the last six, but boy, have they been close. The last five all decided by one goal, including that 2017 NCAA championship game. Those raindrops on the lens will tell you, yes, there is some rain in the area. Now, the field was slick in our first semifinal between North Carolina and Washington State. Well, that's only going to get worse. Yeah, you saw a lot of slipping and sliding in that first game. Amanda Cromwell saw it as well. I'm sure she said something to her team about putting studs on, but that field is soft for sure. Katarina Macario, a player, along with Madison Haley there at the top, leading this number one offense in the country for Stanford. But UCLA, they're going to try to go quick to goal. This team likes to strike early, and they have done it, scoring the first 10 minutes in three of their four NCAA tournament games. Tegan Micah, UCLA goalkeeper, looking to push that ball forward. Cardinal lost it. Here comes Ashley Sanchez, charging toward the goal. She may get a chance to get back, but Katie Meyer, the redshirt freshman goalkeeper, has to slide out and get it early. Early glimpse, though, of the danger of that UCLA attack, and especially in that outside midfield position. Sanchez loves to run at players. And you said it earlier, Julie, Ashley Sanchez, one of those players we've seen come up through the U.S. Youth National Team system, has the distinction of having played in two World Cups in the same year in 2016, both U17 and U20, only player ever to do that for the U.S. Was a U.S. Soccer Young Female Player of the Year that year. I mean, think about the miles she's logged, too, in terms of we've, we talk about how exhausting it is for a lot of these youth national team players and full national team players doing double duty. Of course, they love to do it, but you just never get a break. First set piece opportunity. We'll see the Cardinal keep it on the ground. Now they move forward. There's Macario. Looking to connect with Haley. Those two have such a great relationship both on and off the field. Tremendous amount of respect between those two. You see both of these teams going to want to play. Keep it on the ground. Sophia Smith, another threat in that attack. Let's not forget about her 14 goals and nine assists on the season. <laughs> oh, by the way. And when you look at the offensive numbers of Stanford this year, I mean, they lead every NCAA category. 98 goals leads the NCAA. Points per game, assists per game. Pickett gets it back to Macario. This could be trouble. Macario with her left foot over the head of Haley. Let's get a couple of keys to this matchup. Your Foudy's free kicks for the Bruins. 
I, I think one of the keys is you have to win the chess mass of, of possession because both these teams like to play. You don't want to be chasing Stanford all game. And for UCLA, what happens is if you possess the ball, you also get those outside midfielders involved in that 3-5-2 formation that they're playing. Stanford doesn't have any wide midfielders in their formation, so that's where the space is for UCLA. And you wonder really how both of these teams could be challenged to play the way they want on the slick surface. Haley lifts her head, looks up, tried to get it across. It is blocked out by Rodriguez. Two Rodriguez sisters in the starting lineup. Karina on the back line for UCLA. Annika on the front line. This is Karina. Tegan Micah on the full Australian national team was at the World Cup in France this summer. Did not get to play, but was on the roster. Here's Annika Rodriguez. Six assists on the season for Rodriguez. Having a hard time, though, getting it through Sam Hyatt. What a great leader Hyatt is as a senior on that back line for a Stanford team that lost an awful lot in the way of leadership and really in all facets last year. Paul Ratcliffe telling us he thought maybe for a moment it might be a rebuilding year. <laughs> Not so. 22-1. and one. A perfect Pac-12 record would tell you otherwise. You can see UCLA in that 3-5-2 shape, playing even in the back, taking that gamble. Amanda Cromwell so confident in that back three. Lucy Parker on that right back position, wearing the brace for her right knee. She's been having some issues with it as of late. Kiki Pickett gets it forward to Haley. She'll get it back. Pickett's left, but it's shot is high. How about that give and go, though? Haley does so well getting into these positions. And Pickett, that's your right back, by the way. Nice little run. Haley gets a little lucky as it catches in between those two legs. But Haley's so good at feeding these balls. And that's where she gets the lucky deflection. Pickett looking at this, you can see by her expression thinking, ah, that's one I've got to put away. Given on a platter there for her. Collision will go against Stanford. A little too aggressive that time was Carly Malatsky. There are some of those numbers you talked about. Best in the country for the Stanford attack said in pretty much every offensive category they're number one UCLA though looking to add some firepower and they will Chloe Castaneda's dream season continues as the redshirt senior puts the Bruins on top Chloe Castaneda in that number 10 in midfield. She's been so good. And Katie Meyer just unable to get a hand on it. Thinks she could parry that one over the bar. Tries to get something on it, caught above her. But Castaneda continues two goals against Florida State in the quarterfinal. All five of her goals coming in her last seven games. And she gets UCLA on the board early. Ashley Sanchez picks up her 15th assist of the season. That ties her own single season record. And what a start for the Bruins, just as we had in our first semifinal, a goal in the seventh minute. Washington State did it against North Carolina. That goal would not hold up, though, as the Tar Heels came back with two more goals in the first half to hang on for the 2-1 win. And with this rain and how hard it is for goalkeepers in this rain, I mean, you're going to see these shots happening from outside like that. And take your chances. You're both teams. Challenge those goalkeepers. 
told you, UCLA, they like to jump out on their opponents early. They've had the advantage of early goals in this tournament. They get one again. All but one game in this run to the College Cup. They have scored in the first 10 minutes. That is Karina Rodriguez on the ground for UCLA. some concern for Amanda Cromwell. We'll make sure her players are okay as the Bruins will set the free kick up. Annika Rodriguez sent a bouncing ball and you wonder a little bit. Meyer Smart figuring that ball was going to go out of bounds but I think if you're UCLA you test that keeper see how her confidence is. Let's get a couple of keys, Julie, for Stanford, who now find themselves in a very unfamiliar position of trailing. Yeah, and, and the bite along with their dynamic play. Everyone knows how good Stanford is, but do they have the bite? This is something similar that happened to them in the semifinal last year against Florida State, and they talk about that a lot. They didn't have the bite, they felt, to go with their dynamic play, and this one is pounce on the back three of UCLA. Sophia Smith trying to do that now. Her shot is in! Sophia must have heard my keys, I'm sure <laughs> of it. But there was that's, no doubt where she was going. That's the three front of Stanford. Sophia Smith on this right side. When she gets running at players, it's so hard with her speed and her ability to track that. And again, with this rain, this is something that Tegan is going to want back, Micah. But it, it, that's a good shot. It takes a little bit maybe of a deflection on her. And that's the power of those front three running at the back three defensively. If UCLA is going to stay in that three back, you can be certain Haley, Matt, Madison Haley and Sophia Smith and Carly Malotsky are going to be running at him. I think you could add in number 20, adding to that attack quite often as well. Macario oh, yes. from that relatively new position of attacking midfield where Paul Ratcliffe will find himself looking like the genius <laughs> moving her there this year. Yeah, how about that playing in a, a midfielder and you still have 32 goals, 23 assists. Said, and this is a position that's new for her. I said to her yesterday, Katerina, how much had you played in midfield? She said, not really much at all. It was a bit of a learning curve, especially learning how to get better defensively, and I'm still getting there. I'd say she's getting there pretty well. <laughs> but a great response by Stanford. Exactly what you want to see, a quick goal to get him back in it. Here's Malatsky on the ball on that far side for the Cardinal. And you wonder, too, how well Lucy Parker will hold up. You mentioned that brace on her knee, number 15 for UCLA, in the right back spot. The three back, you have to cover a lot of ground. And she picked up a little bit of an injury in training earlier this week. And one of the reasons that three back works with those three, Parker, McCullough, and Rodriguez, is they're so good on the ball as well. simple for the Cardinal when it comes to these set pieces. They do get a shot out of it. The save made by Micah. Challenge there from Gurma. Pac-12 Defender of the Year. There's Fleming. So instrumental in how and where UCLA plays in the midfield. Castaneda. 
Sanchez trying to track on to this ball. Hyatt calmly takes care of it, gets it now to Smith. Macario picked herself up a little, recovers. Macario. Haley slips and slides, still gets the ball out. Boy, keeping your feet is going to be no easy feat on this field in the rain. You can see with Stanford, there's a fluidity. And same with UCLA. That's the beauty of these systems. With Stanford, they have Maya Doms, who's typically central <laughs> midfielder popping out wide. Macario can pop up front. There's Haley. Trying to get something going there. But there's a free flowing freedom to their movement on both sides of the ball. Advantage actually played here. A handball would have been called by a referee, Ian Anderson, but Stanford was very quickly turning the other direction. Haley. And it was blocked on the way into Micah. The women's Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona coming up on Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Some great women's basketball. Notre Dame taking on number four UConn at Gamble Pavilion in Stores, Connecticut. Remember that tremendous Final Four matchup between those two teams in 2018. One of the clinching moments from Enrique Ogunbowale for Notre Dame. Rodriguez to Viviana Villacorta saw some space for Parker. Delaney Sheehan up and out. But it will set the Bruins up for a corner, their first of the match. Sheehan, a junior out of Brentwood, California. Coaches on the side kind of looking like you, Julie. Getting their little beanie on. Cromwell's sticking with the baseball cap. <laughs> I'd tough. like to go back to my beanie. <laughs> Driven ball right in the middle. UCLA will get a chance from the other side. Official, a talented freshman with bodies all over her, trying to get anything she could on that ball. Rodriguez looking toward that far post. Fleming. Is it off of Macario to keep it for UCLA? That's some of the defensive work that Macario was talking about having to learn in midfield, both sides of the ball. You know, it was so interesting, too, in sitting with the teams yesterday and having them talk about the different players. We asked some of the Stanford players to describe Katarina Macario, and they were so effusive about not only, of course, what she's done on the field, but how great she is off the field. In fact, Kari Malatsky, a senior on the team, got a little bit emotional even talking about it. And all of them, to a player, said, you know, as good a player she is, she's even a better person. And you always love to hear that, and especially when one of those is your teammates. <laughs> but it was really neat to see. And poor Katarina could hardly stand it. She kept covering her face. <laughs> teammates love talking about her. Malatsky. Gets back up, fires a shot, and nice grab to hang on by Micah. Oh, 
Gurma. Her way through to win the ball. Sometimes forget Naomi Gurma, just a sophomore out of San Jose. So back in her hometown. It's Palo Alto, only about 20 minutes away. Great number of Stanford fans, students. Oh, there are four busloads? Is that four what we were we were told. And, you know, we talk so much about Macario and her accolades. She is not one of the four who will be going to that U.S. December identification camp, but she would have been. She was invited, but had a prior family commitment to go back to the country where she was born, Brazil. Has hopes of playing for the U.S. national team. Working to get her citizenship. Here comes Haley. She'll take the shot. And Micah got her body behind the ball. Rule number one for a goalkeeper when it is a slippery field and a ball just get your body behind it. And Haley is going to be one to watch tonight because that matchup with McCullough, the center back, I mean, that is two players going at it. And Haley can spin players so well. If she doesn't have any cover, McCola, she could be in trouble there because she's so effective at spinning. Via Corta wants to lay it off. She does. Macario had seen enough. Not Fleming and Rodriguez will reset. Castaneda lost it. Both players slip and go down. Here are the players from the College Cup. They were called into that identification camp. All new players for Vatko and Anofsky to get a look at. Second no, time. yeah, and no World Cup players actually going to that camp because they're giving them a much deserved break. So this is his chance to look at that next crop. I will remind you that roster for the Olympics is 18 players, though. You had 23 at the World Cup. you got to drop it down to 18, assuming, of course, they qualify. Qualifiers in January. It's a big difference, isn't it? I mean, that is. And you think about the great pool of players and those decisions. How much do you look toward the future? How much do you go with some of those veterans who may be on their way out but are still playing pretty darn well? Yeah, it's, it's hard to... To really bleed in any younger players in that when your roster is so tight like that. Here is Sanchez, number one all time at UCLA in assists. Also 14, now 15 this season to go along with her seven goals. Body's flying. You mentioned we had a chance to catch up with Lopko Anonofsky, new head coach of the U.S. women's national team, replacing Jill Ellis. Talk about pressure. We only have to take the spot of the woman who led the team to the last two World Cup <laughs> championships. No big deal. <laughs> and, and you've got Olympic qualifiers in a month. All right. <laughs> Lotko making his way from the NWSL where he coached Rain FC. I think he was a, a great decision by Kate Margraff, though, because 2A player, and Jen, I know we've talked about this, and this is unusual in the coaching world. You don't find a player that talks bad about him. They all have such immense respect for his knowledge of the game and his management of the players and personalities and everything else. And so I'm excited to see what this next phase brings. Haley, what a touch. The shot from Molaski off the post and in. Madison Haley again, getting into good positions, taking it off the chest. Look at that second touch to bring it down, and then just a slightly paced ball into the feet of Carly Milatsky, who does the rest, but gives so much credit to Madison Haley and her ability again to find players. Tegan Micah gets a hand on it, but with this rain, Hard to save that one. UCLA looking for a quick response. And Katie Meyer had to back herself up a little bit, make sure that ball didn't take what would have been a very unfortunate bounce if you're a Stanford Cardinal. I 
agree with you, though. I have been really impressed with Madison Haley and just her composure on the ball and, and her touch, too. It's smooth. It's not necessarily that first touch that you would think she would take. Mm -hmm. She textures it and really sets up her teammates beautifully. And this is Madison Haley that's not even 100%. She told us yesterday, if you take a look at her right leg, you can see that wrapped a bit. She's been struggling with some knee issues. She was named a second team All-American this season, all Pac-12 first team. And you look at the numbers of Haley and Macario. I know that wasn't Haley and Macario. That was Haley and Malatsky. But the Haley Macario numbers of combinations between them 43 goals, 35 assists between them. That's it's incredible. And look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one more, okay? Because I read this one and was pretty amazed by it. You add in Sophia Smith to that group, yeah. it's 158 points. That is more than 326 of the 335 Division I teams, <laughs> those three. And the Cardinal now at an even 100 goals, 100 assists on the season. Both Haley and Kiki Pickett credited with assists on that Carly Malatsky goal. Fischl lays it off. Down goes Rodriguez. No call. <laughs> you, you just get the feeling the scoring is probably not done here between these two teams. Yeah, and you know with the talent that UCLA brings, I think that's a good no call by the referee. Hard to tell from that angle whether Gurma got her but it didn't look like she got her enough for that to be a penalty kick. Macario the switch over to Pickett. Pickett named a third team All-American. Sophia Smith now Five goals, four assists in the NCAA tournament. There's some big numbers across the board for Stanford. I mean, they've put up a lot of goals, starting with their 15 to nothing win over Prairie View a and in the first round. The scoring margins got a bit less after that. Beat Hofstra 4 nothing the second round. Penn State 2 nothing in the third round. And then 5-1 over BYU in the quarterfinals. I've won over a very good BYU team as well, Jen. Yeah, BYU, another really potent offense on the top in the country this season. And just get the only goal till tonight against the Cardinal in this NCAA tournament. Jalen Hurts and sixth ranked Oklahoma look to keep their playoff hopes alive when they take on seventh ranked Baylor tomorrow in the 18th annual Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. That's noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on ABC and the ESPN app. Fleming wants to go all the way back to her goalkeeper. with Monica Rodriguez, who came from an offside position. Monica missed four matches earlier this season. After missing the last 11 of the knee injury at the end of 2018, Plays it back. I haven't seen nary a sub warm up for either of these teams yet. Hyatt. Over to Bell 
Michael Greedy, one of those unsung heroes, it sits in front of that back line for Stanford. Ball up towards Smith. Karina Rodriguez did not want to let that attack continue to build. She forces the throw in, goes to pick it. Rodriguez and Smith tangled up. Green Rodriguez, a junior, the younger sister of Annika. I think that was more of a slipping on the field rather than coming in. Good to see Sophia Smith back, though, given her struggles last year with a broken leg as well. Happened about midway through the season. And Paul Ratcliffe mentioned it feels like this is her freshman year for her. And she's finally hitting her stride. And we mentioned Ashley Sanchez is a U.S. Soccer Young Female Player of the Year in 2016. Well, Smith won that award in 2017. Hence why we told you a lot of names and faces to keep an eye on here in the near future. Malatsky was back to help there defensively. Lucy Parker, first year at UCLA after transferring from LSU. English youth national team player. Here's Fischl. Quiet so far for UCLA. This freshman has just seen her confidence grow as the season has gone on. Now some substitutions coming for both teams. Allie Trevithick, a freshman, will make her way onto the field for UCLA. Placing Sanchez. And Abby Grubel onto the field for Dobbs for Stanford. Karina Rodriguez, plenty of space. She'll take it. Didn't like to see number 20 closing in. Parker up and over. But too far for any Bruin to get onto. <laughs> you really do see Macario covering a lot of ground there in the center of the field for Stanford. Haley. Not a great touch to bring it down and settle the ball. Hard tackle that time by Kaya McCullough, who is frustrated. Better be careful with the way she is gesturing and talking to our referee. It's good that he just talks to her. I love that. Don't throw the card up, have a word with her. If it happens again, then you can. Nicola clearly thinking she got all of the ball on that one, a good hard tackle, and that's such a fun matchup between those two. Kaya McCullough, senior on that back line in the heart of the defense for UCLA. Macario. the ball she wanted for Haley. Now through December 12th, you can bid on some very special shoes from the likes of Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd, and so many other athletes, coaches, and celebrities. You can bid now at ebay.com slash vweek. All proceeds benefiting the V Foundation for Cancer Research. How cool is that? So many cool items, too, when you check it out. Haley, 
has options to her right and to her left. She's going to go to Smith on her right. Sophia Smith's left footed shot. She has another. One of the things Amanda Cromwell, the coach of UCLA, talked about yesterday was we cannot let Sophia Smith run at us. And this is why. So look at that second, third touch. So quick with her release. Rodriguez can't even adjust. But it starts again with Madison Haley. Too easy for her, too much space. And again, when you have those front three of Stanford with how good they are running at you, they will punish you for it. Three unanswered goals for Stanford. Two of them by Sophia Smith. Madison Haley with a couple of, of assists in that run. And that's the danger and really the prowess of this Stanford team is that you can't just mark out Katarina Macario. You can't just mark out Madison Haley. I mean, it's all over the place. Because Sophia Smith will come at you. Carly Malatsky will come at you. I know if you're UCLA, you don't want to go away from who you are and what you do. But do, do you make some adjustments in trying to take away some of these opportunities that Stanford has been earning in their attacking third? Your adjustment, I wouldn't say, is tactical in terms of formation, because I like their 3-5-2, and they like their 3-5-2, more importantly. But you have to be so cognizant of the space you're giving those front three, right? Madison Haley shouldn't be able to turn as easily. Sophia Smith shouldn't be running at you. You've got to step, or you've got to drop some of those five in midfield to help you. But I like the formation because they've found such success with it offensively. And right now, what you need for UCLA is you need to get possession of the ball and some offense. McCullough makes sure Haley did not have an easy turn that time. the red shirt freshman in goal for Stanford coming into this game but yet to make a save here comes Macario full head of steam Katarina Macario shot is saved by Micah gosh what a big big save that is because this team to dig out a 4-1 in the first half that's asking a lot but UCLA stays in it and again, you're seeing they're just not able to get any pressure on the ball. Macario with that great first touch to break the entire midfield. Third corner kick for the Cardinal. They've played the first two short on the ground. Not this time. Ball flicked toward that back post. Haley is there. It's saved off the line. That's why you put a defender on that back post. And the defense does its job. Madison Haley getting a round of applause as she is replaced by Sam Tran. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final on Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA Championships. And let me correct that so you are not late. That is 8.30 p.m. Eastern for our championship game on Sunday. North Carolina Tar Heels watching and waiting to see who they will face.
official slips. Just over 10 minutes to play in the first half. UCLA took an early lead, as the Bruins have been wont to do in this NCAA tournament, but three unanswered by the number one overall seed in this tournament, the Stanford Cardinal. Stanford with a two goal cushion. Smith has two already. Dances with the ball at her feet, her shot is held on to. There's a perfect look at it though. Karina Rodriguez had a chance to put back pressure on Sophia Smith, keep her back to goal, and instead she drops and gives her that room. And I think instead you've got to be coming and hard chopping at Sophia Smith if you're UCLA. She should not have the time to face, come at, and run at that back line. Nine shots on goal in this first half for Stanford. Malatsky will get a bit of a breather as Beattie Goad comes on to replace her. Goad, a senior out of Melbourne, Australia. Full of Aussies on the field at the moment. Micah in goal for UCLA. Another, as we mentioned, member of the full Australian national team. Good sense an Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 it's going to break out soon. You think? <laughs> at least in the booth. <laughs> Those Aussie fans who tend to make their presence felt if they are here. Everybody bundled up. Temperature dropping, but really a beautiful day here in San Jose. Did get some precipitation tonight. That seems to have let up a little bit as well, though, now. Pickett looking toward that front line. Great composure by Smith. Here's Goad who just came in. She'll force another save from Micah. Challenge for UCLA right now as well as to get some possession. That was one of the keys we talked about. You don't want to be chasing this Stanford team around. And this UCLA team is used to holding the ball. Used to dictating the pace and possession of the game. And right now, every time they get it, Stanford's fighting to get it back and holding it and coming at them again. It's a lot of chasing for UCLA. Bruins felt they really had been challenged in their run to get here to the College Cup. Took the early lead in the seventh minute from Castaneda. And the Cardinal. And then look at that response yeah. two minutes later. First of three for Stanford. UCLA had only given up one goal in the NCAA tournament that came in the final minute of their first round win against Lamar before that. This ball headed toward Micah, who's been awfully busy this first half. Macario. She and Jesse Fleming of UCLA, both finalists for the Herman Trophy. Emily Fox of North Carolina, the other. Fox, of course, injured with that torn ACL from the quarterfinals. Her team into the championship game. chance to see what this UCLA team is really made of 
This is a team that went into Tallahassee, home of the defending national champs in the quarterfinals, and took it to Florida State. Four nothing to score in that game. I mean, they scored early and they did not let up. Quite a different story here as they find themselves trailing. And you can see they exceeded Wisconsin, their opponent in the third round. Took down another ACC team, Clemson, in the second round, quite handily, 5-0 there. Rodriguez. There's the pressure again. UCLA unever to, unable to hold it. Germa will take a shot. Cromwell telling us she really felt her team had been tested this season. You can see what they have done against ranked opponents, and there's a good number of them that they have faced along the way. Just that one loss coming to you know who, Stanford by one goal earlier this year. Stanford looking for more, that shot blocked. If you're Amanda Cromwell, you go in at halftime and say, listen, it's not the score we wanted, but we're still in this. And literally, it could be four or five to one, really, with the way that Stanford's possessing the game. And talk about the need to bring the energy up, but also to hold the ball. I mean, the field is so big as well. Condense the field. Their back line is, is dropping. Their front line is high. Because here's what we know about this Stanford team. Given space and time to run at players and to play make, some of the best players in the country to do that. Number one offense in the country this season. And this Stanford team showing that attacking threat here in this semifinal match. Don't forget their defense is Pretty stout to Stanford. Shut out 12 of the last 14 opponents. Gave up just 11 goals before that goal from UCLA in the seventh minute. I think that's the thing people forget when we talk so much about how good they are offensively. Opportunity perhaps here for Fischl and UCLA. Hit the ground. Penalty kick on the way for the Bruins. Mia Fischel earned that penalty with her perseverance. Garma coming in, Wesley coming in, a little bit clumsy and late, but Fischel fighting for this. You see Wesley with the tackle there, just coming across her body there. I think that's a good call by the referee. And really, in a situation like that, going away from goal, you don't want to be making, obviously, a foul like that. Freshman Kennedy Wesley, though. Well, interestingly, the only Bruin to have taken and made penalties this season is Marley Canales, who is hurt. She was two for two. So it'll be the freshman, Fischl. Fischl, it is saved! The putback is not going to go in. What a moment for Katie Meyer! What a save this is by Katie Meyer, because Fischl hits that low, good pace. And Meyer fired up, knowing that this is such a difference maker going in at half, mentally going in 3-1 versus UCLA, recharged at 3-2. Off the corner, the ball not quite clear yet.
Goad tries to track it down. Goad trying to sneak it through, won't go far. Just over a minute remaining, UCLA with a golden opportunity to try to pull one back here. But the young goalkeeper for Stanford making a big time save. Sophia Smith wanting the hat trick in the first half. Denied by Micah, who already has a season high in saves, by the way, with seven. Coming up at halftime, we'll have highlights from our first semifinal. It's out of the North Carolina Tar Heels beat Washington State. Tell you more about how our ESPN crew supports V Week, and we'll have all of our first half highlights and analysis in this Pac 12 showdown in our second semifinal of the 2019 Women's College Cup. How big is that save, though, just to go into the half with that one under your belt? I mean, that's a completely different outlook for UCLA going in at halftime. Now Katie Meyer can allow herself a moment maybe to take a breath. And Captain Gurma says thank you very much. And UCLA, after grabbing an early lead in the seventh minute, is down two goals. And I think that's another adjustment they're going to have to make right there on that number nine, Sophia Smith. Had to contain her for sure. UCLA head coach Amanda Cromwell joining us now. Amanda, give us your thoughts on what you're going to be talking to your team about here for the second half. Well, we didn't execute what we wanted to do with, uh, you know, cutting off the passes to the wide players. And Sophia Smith just killed us that half. And we needed to force inside there on that first one and you know keep her wide on that on her other one but um, we just weren't executing and you know we, we need to be a lot more composed we still you know had a PK and I think another one I thought we potentially earned but we gotta we gotta be composed and keep the ball what are some of the changes Amanda you make in this second half to execute on some of those things well, we need people to step up. I mean, uh, there's some players that are big time players that just aren't stepping up right now. And so I don't know if the changes are necessarily tactical because we need to press for goals. So it's not like we, at this point going to a four back is going to matter. Um, we we got to force the issue and, and get players in the right spots and hope, uh, you know, Mia can get one back from that PK and, and grind our way back. Amanda, thank you so much. Thank you. UCLA Bruins trailing the Stanford Cardinal. How about this moment defensively for the Stanford goalkeeper, Katie Meyer, the redshirt freshman, keeping a two-goal lead and loving it. On ESPN, as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. After covering four SEC quarterfinal matches in early November in Orange Beach, Alabama, 40 members of our TV crew enjoyed a day off by gathering and participating in the second annual Day After the Four Disc Golf Invitational and Nature Walk. First time and experienced players were grouped. New friendships were born as teams were challenged by a beautiful 18-hole disc golf course at Graham Creek Nature Preserve. Participants submitted an entry fee donation as well as several contributions from anonymous angels within our ESPN broadcast family. And lastly, a big thank you for an all-in matching donation from ESPN parent, the Walt Disney Company. We're pleased to announce that we doubled last year's efforts, raising over $5,600 for the V Foundation. Cancer research and support is a very important mission for our group, as several of our crew members are current cancer survivors, including our producer, Todd Cool, is here at the Women's College Cup, who put this wonderful event together. We're so appreciative of this awesome effort and the incredible outpouring of generosity. You can join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research.
Well, welcome back to San Jose, our Women's College Cup second semifinal of the evening. Stanford leading UCLA 3-1 to one after the first half. Now joined by Stanford head coach Paul Ratcliffe. Paul, give us your thoughts on what your team was able to execute so well and what you'd like to continue to see in the second half. Well, obviously, I was happy that we uh, got a, a few goals. Um, we need to, to get the ball wide and go after the, them in the wide channels. I think that's where it's really open with their 3-5-2. Um, so we have to exploit that space. Um, but the thing I want to improve is I think we need to get more composure and just settle down and uh, link up some more passes and wait for the right moments to go forward. How impressed were you with the response, though, Paul, to that seventh-minute goal by UCLA for this team? Yeah, I wasn't happy with the, the goal. And I don't think the team was either. Um, we were pretty disappointed with that type of goal. Um, so I, I love the response. It's the character of this team all year. They're fighters, and uh, really nice to get three goals in that first half. Paul, thank you for your time. Thanks, you guys. You know, we talk so much about the precision, the dominance of the Stanford team. I think there you're right. He used the word we're fighters, and you got to see that in the way the Cardinal responded after giving up that early goal. And that seems to be the difference when you talk to this group, to the lesson from last year. They said, look, we got to the semifinals last year. We had done all these things as a team. But we realized it, you're only as good as those two games, or one game, for, in their case, with the semifinal loss. There's Macario. Over to Malatsky. Yeah, Stanford losing 2-0 to eventual national champion Florida State in that semifinal last year. Stanford in search of its third national championship to go along with those titles from 2011 and 2017. Lucy Parker back into the game for UCLA. Madison Haley had a couple of assists for the Cardinal in that first half. Overcooks that ball just a bit. You can see one of those two stars peeking out on the back of Madison Haley's jersey. I like that for those two mm -hmm. national championships. UCLA has one national championship that coming in Amanda Cromwell's first year in 2013. And two years ago when UCLA went to the championship game in Orlando against Stanford, that was such a young team predominantly. A lot of those players return, they feel more confident, more veteran. And yeah, that's going to be a pretty easy offside to call. Sheehan was caught. But in hearing from Amanda Cromwell, I mean, you sense there was going to be a challenge of really who was going to show their character and show that they want this more than Stanford does in this second half. One personnel change for UCLA to start the second half. Sophomore Mary Carmen Reyes starting the second half in the midfield in place of Chloe Castaneda, who scored the goal for the Bruins in the seventh minute. Oh, excuse me, Castaneda is in there. She's up there in the attack as well. So my apologies on that. There is Castaneda. Sheehan, Hyatt heads it out in a way. And you heard Amanda Cromwell also say all the stars that are out there in terms of personalities. And Castaneda, number three, is one of them that they want to see more on the ball. And especially as she's been playing this second half of the season and scoring goals. Bruins looking for a chance on the back post. It's Ashley Sanchez who has switched over to the right side of the attack. So a couple of tactical changes for UCLA. Sheehan's on the left, Sanchez on the right, still in those outside midfield positions. 
still in that 3-5-2. And those are the two that have largely been quiet. Those outside attacking midfielders. For UCLA, Stanford doing a very good job of stepping that back forward when they're trying to get some offense going on the UCLA side. Monica Rodriguez is the change, the player who started the match, who did not start the second half for UCLA. Two Reyes is in four. <laughs> Bruins finishing second in the Pac-12 this season behind Stanford. Have been to this match with a record of 18, 4, and 1. We're 8 and 3 in conference play. Castaneda continuing to try to bother that back line of Stanford, but we'll go out for a goal kick. I'm going to take a moment to tell you about the Laughter Permitted podcast with my friend Julie Foudy here. Heard of it? <laughs> I'm sure you heard have. it's amazing. It is amazing. It is truly a lot of fun to listen to. Great guests on that podcast with Julie. So be sure to check that one out on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your podcast to listen to. Our producer, Todd Goose, coolest giving uh, your, your producer, Lynn. A zowie wowie, as you like to call her on the podcast of props. Some props scenario. <laughs> should, should be laughter permitted with Lynn Ozawi. <laughs> laughter and donuts permitted, as we know that it's another love of yours. Stanford on the attack. They've got one more. Make it a hat trick for Sophia Smith. My goodness, Sophia Smith on that right-hand side. Two from the right in the first half, and now with the space again on that right side. They drop, they drop, they drop, and as UCLA continues to do that, Sophia Smith with a quick trigger, beating Mike Lowe again. But so good from that right-hand side. This sophomore now has her second hat trick of this NCAA tournament. She did it in round one as well. We talked about it first half. Amanda Cromwell talked about it when we interviewed her. The need to step to Sophia Smith, and you still didn't see it there. And I think a lot of that is for defenders. They're fearful of her pace. You drop and you drop and you drop. But against a player like that who can hit the ball like she can, you see the danger of dropping. I'm sure Ainton Dorrance and the Tar Heels are taking note. North Carolina awaiting the winner of this match. They will face off in Sunday's NCAA championship game. They sure are taking note because they also play a similar system to UCLA in that 3-5-2 which they've transitioned to as well. <laughs> Referee's going to stop play here. A reminder that you can catch that NCAA championship game as our coverage of the NCAA championships continue with the final on Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Sheehan wanted to find Fischl in the middle. All you can do if you're UCLA right now, right, is bits and pieces. Don't look at the scoreboard. Don't focus on anything bigger than just getting that next goal if you can. The 
Fleming. Canadian international. Was part of the World Cup this summer with Canada. Her second World Cup, which is really fairly incredible to think about at the senior level playing in college. She played the most minutes of any collegiate player at the World Cup in France. Also has an Olympic bronze to her name. Made her debut with the Canadian national team at the ripe age of 15, which is phenomenal. It's been fun to see the growth of Canada as well in soccer, women's soccer in particular in their country. Christine Sinclair chasing that all-time goals record of Abby Wambach. Pickett is flying all the way to the other end line for the right back. We talked to Paul Ratcliffe about words to describe his team, and he said dynamic, explosive, and cohesive. And you see it really in the bite in this group, which was one of the keys. It's not just a dynamic team, but it also has this bite to it. And Kiki Pickett running forward, pressing still. Well, and I like the cohesive part, too, because you can have a ton of talented, explosive players, but if you don't play together, it's generally not the recipe for a championship-winning team, and you do get the sense that that is also a big part of why this team has been so successful this season. Sanchez with the turn. Ball toward the back post. She'll get it back. Yeah, and it's no coincidence of course, Jen, that all four teams have great team chemistry. You can see it, you can feel it, it's genuine. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, it was the success of our U.S. national team for so many years, I believe. One of the, the key factors for it. Sanchez. Split everybody, but nobody to get on the end of it. Sophia, Sophia Smith. Smith trying. What a job she has done tonight. And that right side, just too much space and time. But she's so good with that quick release. Micah not even able to set on that one. And then again here in the second half. Driven boom, boom, boom. low with such pace. And in the weather that we're having, the rain, the slick, how fast it's skipping. Sophia Smith having herself an NCAA tournament. And just reminding you, you know, all that Katerina Macario talk, Madison Haley. <laughs> oh, yeah, this girl can score, too. Fleming. Parker moving up into the attack, something she so loved to do in her time with the LSU Tigers. Greedy. Play it back to Hyatt. All that passing leads it to the go to girl. I think she was trying for the assist though that time. Nobody wanted it. Pick it. Comes flying through with the ball still at her feet to turn the shot from Haley, but it is saved. There's just so much talent in so many different positions on so many different lines with this Stanford team. Kiki Pickett, the right back, had that early, early look, one of the first for Stanford minutes into the game. North Carolina Tar Heels lead the nation in shutouts this season. Their defense has been excellent. And if this result holds and they are to face the nation's number one offense, you're getting a look right now of the challenge 
that awaits the Tar Heels. Katarina Macario hasn't even had to be that involved in the attack so far in this game. No, and she's actually been dropping deeper. Grabbing the ball a bit. I would argue you want a player like that closer to your goal, higher in the 10 spot. Plenty of Stanford fans in the crowd applauding the hat trick efforts of Sophia Smith as she is replaced by Tran. Big numbers put up by the Cardinal so far tonight. And a reminder that in NCAA college soccer, you are allowed a re-entry in the second half if you're subbed out. Here's Macario a little closer to the goal. Hard to knock her off her feet. Gurma, the Pac-12 Defender of the Year. It's an out toward Kennedy Wesley. Challenge right now for UCLA, just get the ball. And then when you get it, try to keep it. But right now, that's what Stanford is doing such an excellent job of. I mean, to a player, when you look across the collegiate game, there's no better team to a player technically in this. This is Madison Haley, just a little bit earlier. She does take some hits there. Big strong player, but has to endure some pretty hard challenges like that one. Dad, Charles Haley, five-time Super Bowl champ in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Her defensive end with the 49ers and the Cowboys. He sees those hits. He's like, Dad, that's nothing. <laughs> Come on, Madison, let's go. <laughs> you have no choice but to be tough. <laughs> so that's your dad. You're fine. That's what I always say to my kids. You're good. <laughs> Casaneda. A big step forward from Wesley, who's been ambitious and getting forward here for Stanford in the second half. Her left footed ball smothered at the near post by Tegan Micah. And the thing I think that Stanford has done well also is that they haven't gone into a shell, played too conservatively. You know when you go up and you kind of sit back and you're knocking and you get yourself into trouble against a team like UCLA with so much talent. Stanford's still going, playing, getting players forward. And it, obviously you want to save your legs and think about Sunday, but you also don't want to stop playing. And I think they're doing a great balance of holding the ball, sending players when they need to, taking risks when they need to, not sitting back too deep and letting UCLA then possess in their attacking third. Ball forward toward Haley. McCullough wins it for the Bruins. Hi, McCullough, the Pac-12 Scholar Athlete of the Year for Women's Soccer. She'll graduate this month. Degree in political science. Here come the Cardinal. The women's 
Jimmy B Classic presented by Corona is coming up Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN app. Some great women's basketball as Notre Dame takes on fourth ranked UConn in Connecticut. The Huskies 3 0 against the Irish in the women's Jimmy B Classic. One in the last 10 in that budding rivalry between those two programs. Several changes there. Sierra Henke. One of them for Stanford. Along with Petey Goad, who you just saw. Both teams making some substitutions. Parker. We'll look forward for Sonny Dunphy, number 12, one of those subs, a senior who just came on for UCLA. UCLA trying to get a little bit of those fresh legs, get them going, get a little energy. Try and climb back out of this hole one goal at a time. As we said earlier, no easy task against the Stanford team that gets so much credit for its offensive prowess, but is equally as good on defense as well. Stanford collects. Kolatsky loses it out of bounds. One of those seniors in the Stanford program. Out of Newport Beach, California. Their numbers not quite as jaw-dropping as some of the others in the attack, but you can see her value. Obviously had that big goal in the 21st minute that put Stanford in the lead. an opportunity for Stanford to maybe rest some of those players. Start thinking about not too much, but at least game planning a little bit, knowing there's another game to be played on Sunday. Should they hang on and get this victory over UCLA? Castaneda playmaking for the Bruins. Annika Rodriguez, number seven, <laughs> into the match, trying to make something of it. Kiki Pickett on that one, coming all the way across with that sliding tackle. Rodriguez. Couldn't get around Ingi. Doms will come back in for Stanford and give Katarina Macario a little break on the bench. What do you make of her night tonight, Julie? Quiet, but to your point, they didn't need her much, right? They, they've had the Sophia Smith show on the right side. They've had the space, really, with those front three. Madison Haley, I thought, had a great game. Carly with the huge second goal to take the lead. Rodriguez and a save. Tegan Michael had that big save on Macario in the first half to keep it at was then three to one. So a good performance by Katarina, but Stanford with all the talent on the field really didn't need her to step up and have a huge performance. Here is Sierra Enke, redshirt freshman out of Cardiff, California. Over to Goad, the Aussie. Grubel. And 
after such a bright start for UCLA with Castaneda continuing her fantastic run toward the end of the season for UCLA. Bruins have just been taken out of this. And Tegan Micah has been way too busy for her liking. In the first half already had a season high in saves. Monica Rodriguez with the ball at her feet for UCLA. It's a fairly easy call as she was trying to clear some space and <laughs> literally clear it. You can you can understand the frustration certainly for the Bruins. This is not the way they wanted this one to go. And this is not the way they're used to games going. Even when they perhaps lost this season, it hasn't been where you're chasing the ball most of the game, and it's been a struggle really to get any type of rhythm going for UCLA. But give tons of credit to this Stanford team and how they're able to possess and the technical players at each line able to do so. Tran got it through to set up Goad. See it, Tran on that right hand side. Sees the gap, finds the space, looks up. You see her trying to pick her seam. You've got three different runners, one at the, at the near post, one further back. Tries to find BD Goad, a great ball. No hesitation from Goad either. She knew she wanted that first touch to be the one. Just couldn't bring it down enough, keep it on target. Twenty minutes to play in our second semifinal of this 2019 NCAA Women's College Cup from San Jose and Avaya Stadium. Jen Hildreth, Julie Foudy, an all Pac-12 affair here in the second semifinal. The number one overall seed, Stanford Cardinal, rolling right along 4-1 over UCLA. They booked their spot in Sunday's championship game. Against the North Carolina Tar Heels, the champions once again from the ACC. No success or space either for UCLA in that attacking third. The lead for the Bruins did not last long. Casimiera earned it in the seventh minute as UCLA pounced, as they've been so good at doing this NCAA tournament, getting on teams early. But then just two minutes later, Sophia Smith started her onslaught on the goal. Her first of three tonight. going to have Pac-12 ACC for the NCAA championship. And what tremendous success those two conferences have had. Nine teams each to the NCAA tournament this year. The ACC had, his, had a team in the College Cup all but one year of this tournament's existence. Pac-12 with three of the four teams here in San Jose. Stanford on top of them all in the Pac-12 for the fifth straight year of the Pac-12 champions going unbeaten in conference play, perfect 11-0. Actually unbeaten in 41 straight conference matches. They continue to make some substitutions. Fischl back on for UCLA. Oh, 
Turner making her way onto the field as well for the Bruins, number six. said before Julie it is not really an easy task to be as composed as Stanford has been and not lose who you are and your identity I mean so often you see teams play not to lose and it affects how they play and they're not as effective but I agree with you that the balance has been very good for the Stanford team just in terms of still being aggressive and going forward but also being smart and it's so easy to go into that lull of just holding it, pulling it. And here they are again, still hungry, still getting forward. And I can assure you, Ants and Dorrance and those Tar Heels are watching this game, especially since they play the exact same system as UCLA does, 3-5-2, how they adjust to it. Left-footed ball bent in and into the gloves of Micah. North Carolina, by the way, 9-2-3 and all-time against Stanford, but the Cardinals have won the last two. Two teams did meet in the 2018 quarterfinals, however. That one, North Carolina able to advance on penalties. I think the nice thing about this game for Stanford as well is it gives an opportunity to go deeper into their roster in this second half. And so you get a rest, a lot of legs. We know North Carolina does that with their full-scale substitutions. So for Stanford to be able to sit a Katarina Macario out and uh, Madison Haley and Sophia Smith, I mean, all of them getting some time in the second half to rest, obviously with an eye to Sunday. Sonny Dunphy. It for UCLA. Beatty Goad, the senior making the most of her minutes on the field. Offside will halt that attack. Tonight, after Lakers Trailblazers, it's Sports Center from Los Angeles with Linda and Stan. They'll have a look back at the best moments between Melo and LeBron. Plus, on Giannis's 25th birthday, we'll break down his career milestones and inside the playoff implications for Oregon and Utah. Sports Center from LA after the NBA on ESPN and the ESPN app. be so difficult especially if you're UCLA when you you see that deficit you think about all the work you have done yeah. in this incredible season to get here and you just have, have lost a handle on this match it's Stanford gave up that early goal and then responded with a vengeance and especially with the confidence that this UCLA team came in in terms of and not an overconfidence by any means but they remember 2017. They wanted another chance at this. As Kaya McCullough said, far too many almost against Stanford. 
I'm tired of the almost. <laughs> you know, and they would now go to 0 and 5 all time in NCAA tournaments against Stanford, UCLA. My apologies, I think I said earlier, Stanford and North Carolina meeting in quarterfinals a year ago. That was UCLA and North Carolina. <laughs> Tar Heels advanced on penalties at the expense of the Bruins. Their way to the College Cup. Having said that about UCLA and the disappointment of losing a game like this, I mean, so much positives to get out of this season, especially with the injuries they've had this year. The various players, Sunshine Fontes, their big freshman coming in, under 17 star. Mentioned Marley Canales earlier. She tore her ACL. Olivia Athens. JC Peterson out. There's Dunphy, whose shot is just wide. And it becomes a character character building moment <laughs> where you look at the potential for future years and what you did this year and how much you grew. A couple more players getting some opportunities now for Stanford. Katie Meyer standing tall did have that first goal that I agree with you, Julie. She's going to look back on that one and felt like she probably could have done better. Kept it out of the goal. She didn't, but you have to have a short memory in goal. And she absolutely <laughs> did. Came back, has not had to make a save in this NCAA tournament until this semifinal match tonight. She's had a couple, including that incredible penalty kick save just before the half. And, and talk about a game changer, that save versus going in at 3-2 with UCLA feeling like they're back in it and totally changed mentally. I mean, that was, I would say, the key moment to this game. And I will say, I think, after that save, probably not the ideal type of behavior you want to see with the way she went over to Fischl after making the save. You could see her yeah. opponents immediately, pull, her teammates, excuse me, immediately pulled her back. I don't want to lose your head in moments like that. But I agree, it was a huge momentum protector, we'll say, in terms of not allowing UCLA to take it right before the first half ended. And in this Stanford attack, Sophia Smith, three of them tonight, give her a hat trick, second one of the NCAA tournament. What a great evening for her as well, given all that she went through in her recovery from her broken leg last year. And it's got to be that much sweeter to be able to come back. You said it earlier, Paul Ratcliffe saying this really is like a freshman year for the sophomore Sophia Smith. Played in just 13 games last year, but in those 13, had seven goals, two assists. She has been on that U.S. Youth National Team radar, played in the 2018 U-20 World Cup, had three goals there. But that trio right there, as yeah. I mentioned, outscoring most of Division One, just the three of them. And this is a trio you could very well see on the U.S. Women's National Team. Katarina Macario is a little bit of a longer story in terms of her citizenship. Born in Brazil, raised in Brazil, came over here to the United States when she was about 12 or 13 years old. And so once she gets her citizenship, it's a five-year process after she turns 18. Unless, of course, FIFA grants the appeal and she could play with the United States team earlier. It doesn't keep her, though, from training, as we talked about earlier. She would have been brought into this December camp if it weren't for this trip she's doing back to Brazil. She said she would love to be in that December camp. And Brazil has made many attempts to get her to play with them. Why right? wouldn't you? Sure, right? Of course she would. And yet she says she wants to wear the red, white, and blue when she can. 
no doubt about that. She's made that very clear, was born in Brazil and made what I'm sure had to be a really tough decision. As you said, at the age of 12, came over with her dad and her brother, her mom, a doctor, still in Brazil. So having to be separated from a parent, that is never easy. Mom's medical license couldn't, license couldn't transfer to the United States, so mom stayed in Brazil. And what a story Katerina Macario has been. The reigning best collegiate soccer player in the nation. And I would guess she will win it again. So going back to back, Herman Trophy Award winner. And that is elite company to be sure to get those two Herman trophies. Morgan Bryan, Christine Sinclair, Cindy Parlo, Mia Hamm. There's That's that. who we're talking about. It's a good back list back. right there. <laughs> Heard of them. Yeah. Yeah, only the fifth player to go back to back with that. And I would think the numbers she's put up leading the nation in both goals and assists, smashing the Stanford single season records in both of those categories this season. Be hard to argue. And you know, the great thing about this season for her as well, a different position for her playing in midfield. Good, got it through. Doms had her shot blocked. Is that she a little nervous about that? I wasn't right. quite sure how she felt when and, Paul Ratcliffe approached her. And and her and Paul oh, had a conversation at the beginning of the year. You're the reigning top collegiate soccer player and how you handle it and how you train and the approach you take. And um, because you, you do have the danger of saying, ah, I'm the best in, <laughs> the best in the country. I'm all that. <laughs> Slowing down a little bit. And he said to her credit, she just grinds away. She learned a new position, has a great attitude willing to grow and learn and has improved he has felt. Indeed. He said she wasn't even healthy last year when she won the Herman trophy chance now for UCLA Meyer not gonna let it happen Official out to Sanchez. Ball not cleared. And so all signs would point toward a Stanford North Carolina matchup in the championship on Sunday. North Carolina leading the series between these two programs. A couple of meetings there was a lot on the line, including that 2009 national championship. one nothing win there for the Tar Heels. North Carolina winning in overtime in 2012 in the College Cup. 2012, the last time UNC won a national championship. Yeah. We talked about this on their show, on their game. Six season drought is the longest they've ever gone. And in case that graphic was a little confusing, 9-2-3 is the record for North Carolina against Stanford. And this is that 2009 National Championship matchup in College Station, Texas. Jess McDonald, you may know her name, North Carolina she had the game winner. That's all it took. That happened early in the third minute of that one. That was national championship number 20 for the Tar Heels. Any 
early thoughts from you, Miss Fowdy, on that matchup this time around? Two very different styles of play, as we saw in the games today. Although I do think you'll see a different North Carolina team against Stanford. But still, you have a North Carolina team that's in its DNA. They're gritty, they're fighters. They're gonna bite, they're gonna hunt. It will be a great test for Stanford when we talk about how they feel they're much more dynamic and explosive and also have a bite. Still not making life easy on the Bruin defense here. Beatty Goad fighting this one. Not stopping, not allowing UCLA to even clear the ball. Two times, can't clear it. Maya Dom's almost getting it in. And I gotta tell you, if you're Paul Radcliffe, you love to see this out of your reserve group. They're fighting, they want time, they want a goal. They're not done, they're hungry. Shots an incredible 25 to 7 in favor of Stanford. And it feels that way. I mean, that's that's what this nation's number one ranked offense can look like. Last goal coming in the 52nd minute. That was the third for Sophia Smith on the night. Hopefully, Sophia, as she's been resting a bit and trying to keep warm on the sideline, has been preparing for our post-game interview. <laughs> <laughs> sure she has. <laughs> Flick forward, a chance for Sonny Dunphy. This is going to be a tough ball to really get my John. Sonny, one of the seniors for this UCLA team. And you know, Julie, that that roll when you see it coming to yeah. an end, that's a, that's a tough it's a moment. a hard game. At least that road came all the way to that semifinal phase. When you think about the careers of players like Jesse Fleming and Tegan Micah in goal, and Dunphy, who we just talked about, any of those. Kaya McCullough. Yeah. Great defender on the back line for UCLA. Four-year starter. McCullough starting every game of her career. Yeah. What a tremendous career those seniors have had, too. It's UCLA team into the College Cup for the second time in the last three years. Continually clawing and fighting at the top of the Pac-12 with the Stanford Cardinal team. But despite the early lead, they could not contain the Stanford Cardinal attack. Four goals on the night for Stanford. Just seconds between them and that spot being officially booked in Sunday's championship. And now the Cardinal can celebrate as they have a date with the North Carolina Tar Heels in the national championship game on Sunday. And if you are part of that Stanford team, how pleased you must be because that was a collective effort a dominating effort against a very good UCLA team that they didn't make look as good as they are tonight and give full credit to the Cardinal for that performance because that is a very good team they just beat tonight. Kaya McCullough walking off the field one final time for UCLA after her tremendous and very consistent career in that Bruin defense. And now we have filled in all of our blanks, at least in terms of matchup. There's still one very important one. 
the one who will be holding up that beautiful trophy come Sunday night. I cannot wait for that game. That is going to be a beauty. So much talent on that field. It is going to be a good one. North Carolina in search of national championship number 23, their first since 2012. Stanford looking for NCAA championship number three, having last won it just a couple of years ago in 2017. And amongst all of the weapons on this Stanford team, Sophia Smith was really the big story tonight. Two minutes, that first goal with the response. Two in the first half, a third hat trick for her, all from that right side. How good was number nine tonight, Sophia Smith? Sophia, now joining us on Thank headset, you. you got a little, <laughs> you're welcome, we enjoyed watching. Um, no. Great job, sister. Thank you. No, congratulations. <laughs> Thank and you so much. Sophia, just talk a little bit about your team's performance uh -huh. tonight and what you liked about it. I loved our energy. I mean, I think we came out from the start. Um, I know we gave up a, a, a tough one, but I think we responded really well from that and we didn't let anything um, change our confidence. I think we all trusted in each other to come back um, with more energy uh, than the other team, and I think we did a really good job. What about your performance on that right side, Sophia, with the hat trick? Describe that one for us. It was awesome. I mean, I kind of knew going into that that I'd have some space out there, so I, I was able to prepare for that, and I think I did a good job of not being hesitant when I got the ball and used my speed to my advantage, and I, it all worked out. <laughs> Sophia, last season had to be so frustrating for you just with the injury and then having to come back. And right. but What was that whole journey like for you, just to get back and then now to be able yeah. to savor moments like this? Exactly. Uh, it was obviously tough. I mean, injuries are never, are never ideal, but they happen, um, and I think it was just a matter of time before I was back uh, playing like myself again, and I think this game really showed it. Um, I've worked really hard to come back, and I couldn't have done it without my teammates. So uh, it's, it's just all coming together. Now let's fast forward to Sunday, Sophia. You have the University of North Carolina as your opponent, of course. What are the keys to try and win a national title for Stanford against a very good team like that? Um, I think just be ourselves. I mean, I think we have we have a lot of talent, but I obviously think that our energy is what is what won us this game. So I think bringing that same energy, maybe even more, to the next game, um, and and bringing that energy for a whole 90 minutes, if not more, um, and putting our chances away. I think that's important. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Go Thank get ready. You. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you so much. Sophia Smith and the Stanford Cardinal on their way to face the North Carolina Tar Heels. Two number one seeds facing off in that championship game. Here we go. A great matchup, as you said, between these two programs. North Carolina getting the win over Washington State in their semifinal and Stanford taking care of business against UCLA. So our matchup is set. Our final score in this one, Stanford 4, UCLA 1. We hope you've enjoyed it. We thank you so much for watching. Coming up next, we've got some college basketball, USC versus TCU. Come back for our championship game Sunday, 8.30 Eastern on ESPNU as we say goodnight from San Jose.